I cannot forecast to you the action of Russia. It is a riddle, wrapped in a mystery, inside an enigma. But perhaps there's a key. That key is Russian national interest. Russia, the land of Romanovs and revolutions. Today, for no apparent reason, we are going to be examining the Russian economy. Now, because only three people in this class have studied Russia, we are going to embark on a swift journey to Russia and review its history, whether you like it or not. <laughs> the year is 1905. Russia is the largest nation in the world. 82% are peasants, and they are not at all happy with the way their government is working. There is a lot of turmoil going on. For example, the Austrians and Germans are just annoying little bugs. Let's end this little game quickly. They have good guns. They're grush. Because millions of people were dying from the foolhardy Zerg rush, this is what was happening back in Russia. It is now 1922. Russia has become the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, USSR. The USSR, or the Soviet Union, tried to implement communism by giving the state control of most of the economy. MEP, New Economic Policy, was used to keep the Soviet Union afloat. It retained state control but allowed some private enterprise. When Lenin died, his successor was none other than the notorious Joseph Stalin. Stalin was not a nice dictator. He implemented policies of collectivization in which peasants would be forced to farm for the state and rapid industrialization through the five-year plans where quotas were set for industrial production to force the Soviets to be as advanced as the rest of the world. Also, I like cowboy movies. Now, what happened if you didn't listen to Stalin? Okay, so 60 million people died. I got the job done. Look, I even helped us win World War II. Also, now it's 1953, so I'm dead. With the death of Stalin, the Soviet Union was now under leadership by Premier Nikita Khrushchev. Although he kept most of the Soviet government's centralized power active, he also implemented minimal liberalization and de-Stalinization in which the elements of terror were removed from the government. Finally, it is 1991. The current premier is Mikhail Gorbachev, who is attempting to vastly liberalize the Soviet Union. Unfortunately, he failed. His perestroika striked him, and his glasnost shattered like glass. Because of all the freedoms Gorbachev gave the people, they at last voiced their opinions through Boris Yeltsin, who overthrew the Soviet Union and established the Russian Federation. Now Yeltsin, he didn't know doodly squat about how to revitalize the Russian economy. So he took a drastic step. He made a rapid transition to a market economy through shock therapy. Unfortunately, the Russians did not exactly know how to control the market after 69 years of Soviet command economy. Because of this, the Russian economy bombed. Coincidentally, the Russians did reduce their nuclear arsenal. And the year is now 2012. The modern Russian economy has recovered, although it is now commodities based. Russia has a lot of natural resources. There is a new leader, Vladimir Putin. He has mostly kept the economy in check, although some consider him a soft authoritarian because of his consistently high level of power in the Russian government. I will be contrasting the Russian economy under Soviet and modern eras. 
There is one major and obvious difference between the two. Soviet has command economy, while modern is market economy. What does this mean? As you can see, the two are polar opposite. Other key areas of difference are social welfare and international role. To reduce inequality, the Soviet system provided social welfare and mass education to the people. Nowadays, the system has been reduced and many more people are in poverty. As for international role, the Soviet Union used to be an isolated superpower. Because of this, it did not suffer from events like the Great Depression. However, it could not do as well because without trade, the USSR had to produce every single necessity for the people. Nowadays, Russia is a valuable asset to many countries because of the natural resources such as oil it provides. The Soviet and modern economies are quite similar. Here is a picture to assist you. Also, I'm tired of talking. So what will happen now? Also, Russia is on a democratic path. I personally think there could be a re-implementation of leftist policy, or at the very least, several reforms to the market. Most people are dissatisfied by the high levels of inequality, and the natural resources will eventually run out and force Russia to find a new way to maintain its GDP while eventually reducing foreign intervention and possession of state assets. But what will truly happen? Only the future can tell.